Only a fundamental understanding of time will explain the paradoxes of quantum mechanics. In quantum atom theory, time is created in a continuous process at the quantum level by the atoms themselves, combined with the wave-particle duality of light. In this diagram of an atom, light expands out from its centre as a light sphere of quantized wave fronts. When it makes contact with the electrons on the surface of an atom, the wave function will collapse into a new photon particle and into a new moment in time and space. There is then a quantum leap of energy, creating a wave function in the form of a new light sphere of future possibilities. When this wave function comes in contact with the atoms of another object, the process will repeat itself again, creating the forward momentum of time. In this way, two-dimensional space on the surface of the atom expands into three-dimensional space-time. Because it is impossible to achieve absolute zero, everything is radiating photon energy continuously, creating a chain reaction of photon-electron couplings. In quantum atom theory, this process also creates a time continuum, or arrow of time. Just like in Einstein's theory, special relativity, there is no absolute or universal time, because atoms create their own time, relative to their position and momentum. The individual observer is the only true reference frame, because they are creating their own time and space, relative to their position and momentum. Any object that comes in contact with the wave particle function will collapse it. But because the observer can choose when and where to collapse the wave function, we have free will to create our own future. The wave particle duality of light, or electromagnetic radiation, is continuously creating a blank canvas for the observer that she or he can participate in. This is what Socrates called a sea of beauty. In this oil painting of a geisha girl walking through sunlight, the wave-particle duality of the light will collapse as she walks through the rays of light. She will collapse the wave function into moments of time and space, creating her own space-time. The best way to see this happen directly with light is in the two-slit experiment. The light will expand in all possible directions as a wave-particle function of quantized wavefronts. When the wave function reaches the screen with the two slits, the photons will react with the electrons of the screen. This will collapse the wave particle duality of the light, creating new quantum particles in space and new moments in time. The part of the wave that does not come in contact with the screen will expand in all possible routes, going through both slits as two light spheres of quantized wave fronts. Constructive and destructive interference between the waves will cause them to superimpose or cancel each other out. When this wave particle function comes in contact with the screen, it will collapse, creating moments in time and quantum particles in the shape of an interference pattern. When the observer turns on a detector to determine which slit a photon passes through, the interference pattern collapses. This is because to observe the photon, we have to create a photon-electron coupling, collapsing each wave front into a new quantum particle that will have its own position in space and time. Just like in Newton's first law of motion, the interference pattern will continue to maintain its state unless acted upon by an external force. If we turn the detector off, we remove the photon-electron coupling, and in time, the interference pattern will reform. Time is the key to understanding the two-slit experiment. However insane this theory might sound, it explains all the paradoxes of quantum mechanics. We have entanglement because the polarization will be set at the creation of each expanding wave front. The wave front will expand as a quantum wave particle function in the form of a light sphere and the polarization will remain the same for the entire surface of the light sphere, no matter how large it becomes. Each wave front will be quantized at the level of the Planck constant and will collapse into a new quantum particle that will have its, that will have its own position in time and space that never existed 
before the wave function collapse. The wave function represents the time continuum at the most fundamental level. Time only moves forward because the probability of the wave function only works one way. We always know the position and momentum of a quantum particle in the past. In these diagrams, the atom represents the observer, creating his own time and space. Therefore, if the observer looks up, he can see back in time through light years of space. But if he looks down into the quantum world of the atom, he can only see probability. The probability of the uncertainty principle is the same probability that the observer will have with any future event. We have an uncertainty principle because the quantum particle will only have a position in time and space if the wave particle function collapses. If the observer does not collapse the wave particle function into a moment of time, the quantum particle will only have the momentum of its own wave particle function. At a fundamental quantum level, the observer is the observed within his or her own created space-time. Therefore, the more accurately we know the position of a quantum particle, the less certain we are of its momentum. And if we know its momentum very accurately, then we can't be quite sure where it is. This is because to observe the quantum particle, we create a photon-electron coupling, collapsing the particle wave function into a moment of time and space that is part of the observer's own created space-time. This can explain what the observer actually sees. In this diagram, a laser beam is sent through a slit. The observer will then adjust the slit so less of the light can pass through it. The observer will see the beam get narrower and narrower as the slit is adjusted closer. But when the slit gets to the quantum level, the light will start expanding into a quantum wave particle function. When this wave function comes in contact with an object or observer, it will collapse into a new moment in, of time and space. In this way, creation is being created continuously. This can also explain why light is so beautiful when it strikes an object. It is because we are looking at a moment of pure creation of time and space. Because each at atom is creating its own space-time at the same rate that light moves, the expanding wave function of light between the atoms will always be a universal constant, independent of the motion of the source. In quantum atom theory, infinity is not a mathematical paradox, but an actual reality of our universe. Because the wave function collapses into moments in time and also into quantum particles, we have the infinity of time and space. This can explain the problem of mathematical infinities in quantum electrodynamics that can only be cancelled out in a process called renormalization. The calculations for each coupling on a Feynman diagram are infinite. In quantum atom theory, there is no need for renormalization because these infinities represent the continuous process of the time continuum creating the infinity of space-time. In this diagram of an atom surrounded by photon-electron couplings, feedback from other atoms will create sets of infinities. The reason why we can always divide infinity into sets of infinities is because of the continuous process of the wave particle function collapsing into new quantum particles. Each set of infinities will be a set of fractional self-similarities creating their own infinity of time and space. This can also explain why there is no centre or outer limit to our universe. There can be no centre or outer limit to infinity. Each fractional self-similarity will be governed by the law of the conservation of energy. In an isolated system, the total amount of energy remains constant and cannot be created or destroyed, although it may change form. This theory is very simple, but I think it is also very beautiful. We have the free will to create our own future within the dynamically evolving universe of Einstein, and quantum mechanics and classical mechanics of Newton are united.